Link click. <laughs> what can we say? What can we say? Hey, I'm Romania Black. And man, last episode, episode five was really hard to watch. And I think it fried my brain. <laughs> I think I was so sad in that episode and so out of it that I just, I know the discussion was still very long, but I felt so out of it during it. I was like, I, wa I felt like I wasn't focusing because I was just so horrified by what I had just witnessed. And so afterwards when I got in the discord one it was good to know that there were others that felt the same way I was like am I the only one that thought this was really uncomfortable no I was not um which I think will be a universal feeling throughout that episode for the entire fandom it was very hard to watch I mean I give the show props for being realistic and showing just how terrible it is for a situation like that but man I don't think I'll ever go back and watch that scene again I just don't think I can um, but we were talking in the Discord and had lots and lots of theories. There were lots of theories in the comments. And I realized that I may, before I start the discussions, I may have to go back uh, and go to Discord and look at the comments everybody else has made before diving into the discussion. So that way maybe we're on the same page. Because as I'm recording this, I'm about a week behind on Patreon because of scheduling and about two weeks behind on YouTube. So it does throw some things off. So I'll probably end up doing that. When I get done watching the episode, I'll probably go to Discord, get everybody's thoughts, and then come back and do the discussion. So that way I have some theories going in. Because this series, what's so great about it is that we all can come at it from different perspectives and pick up on things that we didn't even notice that other people did notice and it's really cool to be able to interact with people in the comments and stuff that I miss because my thing is I'm coming straight off of the reactions as soon as I know with the reaction I usually start the discussion and things are still fresh but my brain misses a lot and so when I go to the discussion in the discord and stuff people have had time to go back and break things down I'm like okay you all are noticing things that I did not notice in the moment so awesome so that's probably what I'll end up doing, but we got some conspiracy theories. We got lots of fun things going on. I want to talk about them with y'all before we start this episode uh, because there's there's just a lot to go on. So I mainly have three people that, uh, four people that have offered up some really good comments. Um, Cherry, SQQ, LBH314, Alexander Q, and Anime Annie have offered up some very nice theories, as you'll see on our, our happy board here. And I'm just going to kind of break them down uh, before we start because I think it's important to bring them up, especially some a big conspiracy theory that I'm like, I'm so excited about. So uh, Cherry noted that the sister, we're talking about the sister being mute, but then obviously talking to Chang at some point. And Cherry noted that the sister could be selectively mute. It could be because of her home life that she doesn't want to talk. And honestly, don't blame her. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, we talked about the powers that Chang has when he enters someone's body in the photos. That person does gain the ability like Chang has like to speak to have extra strength to be able to do certain things that that's why Lu has to tell him to calm down and tone it down because when Chang possesses them they can do everything that Chang can do and Lu's like that doesn't always match up with how they are in the series um but also that the sister might have chose to be selectively mute not just because of her bad home life but because it offered a chance for her to develop this sign language this secret language with her brother that only the two of them shared the twins had this option i'm assuming they're twins had the option to share this ability together um i also think it's important to point out i was talking with cherry about this that chang has often embodied women in photographs and we can say all we want about shipping and stuff and what that means about chang but the idea that Chang has been able to empathize a lot with women, which which the struggles of women has been a big theme in this series, <laughs> interestingly enough. And so I, I'm like, has all of this been leading to this, to Chang embodying uh, Tianxi? Is that all what this has been leading towards? And then Tianxi's outfit. I'm going to show a picture here in a minute of it. But Tianxi's outfit, I noticed, I talked about everybody in the Discord, that her outfit has a sweater with a zipper over the heart. So I'm like, okay... Is Tianxi going to open up her heart to Chang or is it going to release a monster like in the OP? I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to be the latter, but we'll see, right? And in the OP, uh, Cherry Noted had some shattered glass uh, with four pieces surrounding by Lou. One of the pieces by Lou was like illuminated and the other three were in darkness. So whatever that means, I feel like this series, the OP does a really good job of both throwing out just random imagery that's just for the sake of discussion and there's no real tie to the show and then imagery that has distinct symbolic elements and i'm like and the show doesn't tell you what's what so you're just sitting there like well maybe this will have importance maybe this won't it's very fun to break it down right 
Um, SQQLBH314 said that Billy Billy had a theory that anyone that gets possessed gains an ability. And I was like, well, that's okay. <laughs> kind of like an infectious spreading disease. That's interesting. Um, and that the ability doesn't activate until you do a special task. So they were saying like in the Billy Billy theory, when Lou and Chang like clap hands, it activates their theory. But for the red eyes, it's something different. Um, and that some people will go their entire lives without knowing they have an ability unless they do like a backflip or something special. I, I have two issues with that theory though. One, then how does the brother get the red eyes ability? Because we're going to talk about that. I think it's the brother with the red eyes ability, not the sister. But I don't know. Or if they both had them, how did the brother get them? Who possessed the brother to gain the ability? Did Chon do it? We don't know. Um, and the other thing is, I kind of like that the clapping is is the technique. It goes with the ED that the clapping is the thing that adds it together, that, that touch, that contact, that intimacy. Um, my theory is wondering if just there are three abilities. There's red, blue, and yellow. And we've talked about this in previous episodes. And the red ability stands on its own. But then there's the blue and yellow ability that work together. And the blue and yellow ability, you have to clap your hands. Like in the ED, we have the two figures that do this. But the red ability, you don't have to. The give and take is the red ability you can use by yourself, but you can only use something in the present. You can't go back to the past. And the clapping lets people go back in the past and time travel. That's, that's my theory. Plus, I like the idea that you have blue and yellow. When you put them together, they make green. And green is a contrasting color to red. They like clash, right? So I thought that was really interesting. But who knows? We don't know. Nobody knows what the answer is. That's the funny part. And then uh, SQQLBH314 noted that Liu's, Liu's dad wanted the phone because of some kind of fortune tied to it. So that could be why they want the phone back. They don't know what Chan is doing. They just want the phone back because it's tied to some kind of money issue. Of course it is. So, okay. Um, Alexander Q had a really interesting theory that maybe the old man's powers could be tied to stopping time in the present and that the old man and the red eyes have powers that deal with the present and Chong and Lu's powers deal with the past. Does that mean there are people with abilities that tie to the future? I, I don't know. There's so many theories. There's so many things we could do with this series that it's kind of insane, right? But this series has done a really good job of pointing out that everything matters. Everything from season one, episode 5.5, that random OVA, it mattered. We're going to talk about episode one here in a second. It all matters. Everything is like coming full circle. Everything from the beginning matters. You need to have been paying attention. It's wild, right? I also wanted to note that when I was talking to Alexander Q, it made me realize that it's like the Power Rangers. You have Chang as uh, the Blue Ranger or the Black Ranger. He's always dressed in black. You have, uh, well, Lou is the Blue Ranger. You have Chang as either the Yellow Ranger or the Black Ranger. Although the Yellow Ranger was a woman in the original series, so the Yellow Ranger being a woman and tying to Chang's power, I'm just saying it would make sense. And then you have uh, the Red Power Ranger, which could be the brother, and the Pink Power Ranger could be the sister. And so we're just needing a Green Power Ranger, which if it's Chon, then you know, we've got a whole Power Ranger set. We got it all there. It's all good. Uh, who knows, right? I just thought that was really funny. And then Anime Annie had a lot of comments, and I want to talk about everything in black is really based on what Anime Annie said in their comments, so we need to talk about that. Um, first of all, I do like Anime Annie's comment, because I talked about the brother possibly uh, repeating some of the dad's behaviors. And I do think that while that's still a possibility, I liked Anime Annie pointing out that, well, the aggression and the protectiveness of the brother could be just the fact that because of the home life they've grown up in, he's very wary around men. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's true. If you grow up in a household full of women and the only male figure you're near is abusive like that, then yes, you will probably view men through a very scrutinized lens. Now, that begs the question of how he got hooked up with Chon, which we'll talk about in a second, and his views of Chang. But it definitely makes sense of why he's wary. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Tian Chen and Tian Shi. Here's the big theory, right? We've been talking about this in Discord and going crazy with it. And I've not looked at the comments for episode six, obviously, because I haven't watched it yet. Um, but the big theory that Anime Annie posted, posted that I am like a thousand times on board with is that the two of them have traded places. That the person talking to Chang right now is not Tian Shi, but is Tian Chen, the brother. And the kid that gave Lou the photograph is the sister. They've just switched places. Either Tian Chin is wearing a wig or he's grown his hair out over the last seven years 
or three years. How long has it been? Has it been three years? They said three years ago. Either they've grown out their hair over time where they're wearing a wig and uh, Tian Shi has chopped off her hair to look more like the brother and they're dressing in similar pastel palettes so it's harder to tell, right? And the reason for that is this eyebrow theory, which Anime Annie uh, posted. I'm going to show you guys an image right up here that anytime we've seen when we saw the sister and the brother in the flashback with Chang, the sister's eyes have the little eyelashes coming out and the brother's eyes do not. Well, when you go back and look at the image of the kid that gives Lou the photograph, you see the eye for a hot second. They both have red eyes. You see the eye for a hot second and there's eyelashes on that, but clearly shorter hair, right? So the girl could have shut, so Tianchi could have cut her hair short and posing as the brother to give him the photograph. Whereas, if you look at the eyes of Tian Shi meeting with Chang, the eyes have no eyelashes that are similar, which is a sign that it could be Tian, Tian Shin posing as the sister, which would explain why they can talk. That would explain that. And it also would explain the idea that when they were in the car, uh, Chan was on the phone with one of the twins and was saying, oh, well, that's a really risky plan, but I guess we could try it. Well, the risky plan could be that the brother's gonna cross-dress as the sister and go in there and pretend to be the sister when he's the brother. I mean, that's a pretty risky, bold move, right? And unless they check their pulses, they're not gonna know. So yeah, I, I was like, that all makes sense. I'm If the two of them traded places, now the question is why? My biggest question is how, where does Tian Shi fit into all of this? Because we had a big theory going on that it could have been, we're hopefully gonna find out what happened because Chong was there, the theory is that the sister stepped in to try to protect the mom and the brother from getting hurt by the dad and ended up causing an accident that killed the dad, right? The mom ends up dying, the dad ends up dying too, but the police end up blaming the brother. And so the brother, our theory was the brother would go to a juvenile detention or whatever the Chinese equivalent of that is because he was the one deemed responsible. And then while in juvie, ends up meeting Chan, who's an attorney, and they end up forming an alliance somehow. Either the boy gets the red eye powers from somewhere or Chan gives him the red eye powers, something. But he's using Tian Chen to get revenge on the Lu family, the Lu El family, which we'll talk about in a second. And the sister is trying to protect her brother because she knows that Chan is, does not have Tian Chen's best, in, best safety or intentions in mind so she's trying to protect her brother and she's the one that gave Lou the photograph to try to get Lou to go back in time and figure out what was going on with all of them so that they could help them in the present. That's my theory and I think everybody agrees with that or at least has a similar theory in there that that's the situation. Now but the big question is though is that true? Is the sister trying is the sister working alongside but also independently of Chan and Tian Chen? Is she working completely separate of the two of them? Is she working with them but being a double agent? Is she working with Tian Chen and, and Chan and this is just part of their plan to, to wrangle them in? That part we don't know. We don't know exactly what the loyalties and alliances lie with this. Um, with the ED, the first couple of verses we just talked about Until It Dies, I think, and I told everybody in Discord, I think the first couple of verses of Until It Dies are about the parents, about the parents not having their arguments. And we talked about how the song could be from the brother's perspective, the brother's point of view, and then the evil unspoken could be the dad. It could also be tied to the sister's select mutas, muteness, um, that they don't want to speak about the evil going on in their house. And it talks about the broken system and swimming with the sharks. That line could refer to Chan. So lots of cool stuff there. But then uh, Anime Annie finally had all of these timeline clues that I was like, okay, we need to go over this before we start this episode because we're at the halfway point in the series, <laughs> in the season. So we need to go over this as a refresher, right? And there's the line, first it was Zhu, mentioned in the episode, and episode four. And that Zhu was the CEO who was having the affair or trying to have the affair with Emma, right? And so Luel Min said the company was theirs. So this company back from episode one, the first case they had, the company was tied to the Luel family that we're dealing with now. And the first task given was to investigate Emma. Now, Anime Annie pointed out that we don't know who hired them for that case. It was a man, but we don't know who it was. So was it Chan? Was Chan roping them in from the start? 
what is this? And so then Luel Min was not, he was not the red eyes when he first attacked Emma. He just, he was not that. Then they had a car accident that disabled him. And then after the accident, Anime Annie pointed out that while he was drunk, he asked his friend for help getting revenge. And that's when, so at that point, we think that maybe they knew about the red eyes and they just hadn't used them until that moment. But there, it was always on the table, maybe. And then the red eyes possessed and killed Emma. But before Emma died, that's when Chang shows up to try to talk her off the roof. And then red eyes kills her anyway. So they didn't know about Chang's ability back then because Chang had just entered as himself through the security footage and the photographs. So it could have been that after Chang tried to save her and it didn't work, Red Eyes got curious and was like, who are you? Why are you here trying to help? And started to do their research to figure out who Chang was. And that led to the whole thing with the photo room, with, with Sean Sean, with all of that business, right? To tie back to the present. Now, could Sean have gained an ability after his wife's murder, I, I made fun of, of Captain Zhao in the last episode. I've been like, you don't know your friend as much as you think you do, which I still think is true. I don't think he knows Chan as well as he thinks he does. But they talked about there being a period where Chao, where Zhao was not around Chan. So I think that during that period, Chan might have been able to gain the ability that he has now, if he has an ability, and or gained the power of the red eyes and passed it on, if that's a thing. Um, but he did it while he was not around Zhao. So there was a period of time where he wasn't around him and that's where all of whatever happened with Chan went down to get him to where he is now. Um, could Chan's family's murder have been linked to the Luell family? Could have been. Anime Andy points that out and that ties back to that line that he tells the family like we take we give being like your family caused my family's destruction so now I'm going to destroy your family. Although that still doesn't explain like if if Chan wanted to destroy the Luel family, why get Chang and the others involved, right? Why even risk it? Although it could have been something where they got involved without Chan even really wanting them to. So it could have been an accident. Now Chan has to roll with it, right? Could be. And then uh, Luel finally apparently is the fourth most common surname in China, <laughs> like Smith in America. Um, so I'm wondering if it is just a big red herring that the Luel Min family is tied to the twins family. If it's, if it's all just a big red herring and there's not really any connection, seems like a big coincidence that they're all connected. And then it turns out to not be a thing. Seems like a big coincidence. I don't know, but apparently there was a basketball captain in season one that was involved in the earthquake who had the last name of Luel too, that they're not connected. And then a uh, Siwen, a uh, Master Siwen's surname is Luel, but its characters are different than that of Min and Lon and Jean. So different, different Luel. So um, yeah, yeah. This this whole series has made so much to think about, and I've not been looking at any of the promotional material, anything like that. Um, I'm sure after the season, I'll want to look at it and be like, ho ho ho. This is what they're possibly giving away. It would be cool to look at the promotional material at the end of the season. So I may, when we get to episode 11 or 12, whatever the last episode is, I may ask Discord um, the day before I look at the, the day before I look at the, uh, the episode to show me the promotional material or link it in spoiler tags so that I can see it um, and talk about it after the episode. Might do that. But yeah, I just, this episode hurts your brain. <laughs> this series hurts your brain. And uh, yesterday, I was going to watch this episode when it came out, but I had a headache all day long. I was really stressed from work, and I had a headache. And it was just one of those headaches that you can't get to go away. You take medicine, and it's still there. So I was like, I'm just going to sleep it off and then start the morning fresh with the new episode. And so here we are. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of Whiteboard Coon now. So yeah, I, I don't know what this episode is going to give us, but I am really excited. Um, I'm just... I, <laughs> that's basically the only sound we can make for it, right? But we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to start episode six of Link Click season two and see what we get. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's, let's do it, y'all. Well, glad to know that everybody in the Discord is as confused as I am. <laughs> Discord. I, I went to the Discord after I watched this episode. I haven't told them yet. <laughs>
But I went in there and looked at what their comments for episode six. I had muted the channel yesterday because usually, usually with the series that come out weekly on, on my channel, in the Discord, I'll mute the channel until I've gotten a chance to watch the episode and then I'll go back and see what everybody's been saying. So I just now went back to look at Link Click and there was a couple of comments, but for the most part, everybody was like, ah! <laughs> We're at the halfway point of the season, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like they have, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? I feel like that this series is going to have a third season. I think they're going to have a third season. I don't think we're going to find out anything about their powers in this season. I Maybe, may, maybe we're going to find out a little wee bit. I think that maybe we'll find out a wee little bit about Lou a wee little bit about Chang, and then I feel like they're setting us up to find out everything. I feel like that's the case, but I feel like the majority of the season is just going to be chasing the twins and figuring out their whole deal, figuring out the red eyes, and figuring out their tie to Chan. I feel like that's going to be the season, because we only have, you know, five to six episodes left to get to the point of what it all is, and there's still so many things we don't know and I feel like maybe along the way we're going to find out like a wee little bit about Chang, a wee little bit about Lou. And then we have the live action series that I feel is going to be talking about the backstory with both of those characters. And maybe in the live action they're saving a lot of that for that series and we'll find out more there. But I feel like we're not going to really find out much. <laughs> They're going to keep the way that they've been weaving in elements from season one into this season makes me think that all the things in this season is going to build to a third season. And maybe the third season is going to be the final season for the series. I don't know. I'm all for them doing a lot of link click. I love this series. What I don't want is them to like run it into the ground or make it hokey and lose the appeal that it has. I would, I'd much rather see a series burn out then I want to see a series go out in a blaze of glory than to fade away and burn out into nothingness I don't like that um so but I do think they're gonna have to have a third season of this show to explain things because I don't think they're gonna explain things to the extent that they need to in this season but but we're only at episode six we still have a lot more left we could get a lot more explanation. We don't know. I'm just, that's my, that's the vibe that I get. I get that they're setting things up for a final season where we will confront Chan in the final season where everything will get explained and we'll have some resolution. But I feel like this is the second act. The first act was introducing the characters, the powers, the stakes, and this season is exploring that through the twins. And the next season, if we have it, is going to be finding a resolution or a contingency that leads to some kind of climax. I don't know, but I don't know. So uh, as we go through this, we're gonna be looking at uh, these things here. Um, basically what they were saying on Discord is one, Lou looks like he knew what was going down. I agree. I agree. I was gonna talk about that when we get to that scene. It feels like when Lou turned his phone off, he was like, okay, it's time to act. We got a couple minutes left. I feel like Lou knows what's going to happen. And so he's like, okay, I gotta leave. The question is, how the hell did he get out the window? Where did he go? I, Anime Andy said in the Discord, I see you, time traveler. I'm like, where, where is, what is happening? So the only thing I could think of is what Cherry was noting when we started this episode was the glass shattering and the fragments of Lou in the glass. Was that a reference to him breaking the window and escaping? I, mm, or did Chon go after him? I don't, I don't know. I think Lou got away. I feel like Lou got away. I feel like they would have gave us more if Lou had been kidnapped. I feel like the show would have done that. But I think Lou sensed something was going down and he left. But I don't know. Um, Anime Annie pointed out a very important thing that I hadn't thought about. In that it, the real Tian Chan, if they're alive, will now have a scar on their forehead to show that it's them. Because of where they got hit with the hammer. <coughs> um, of course... The Tian Chi that we see in this episode could still be Tian Chen. They have bangs covering that potential scar conveniently. So it could still be them and we just won't know until Chang lifts up her hair and reveals that it's Tian Chen. Don't know. Right. And then there's the idea of being able to pick up on the body movement. So Tian Chi, if it is Tian Chi, if it is Tian Chi, it could be Tian Chi possessing Tian Chen. Ah! Um, but if it is Tian Chi, they're going to be able to pick up on body movements. That would explain in episode one of this season where the red eyes was detecting that, that Chang was lying. It could be that they detected Chang was lying and 
that's how they knew because they could pick up on the body movement. Same with, I think they knew that the listening device was there the entire time. They knew. Tianchi knew. But it could be Tianchi in the scene with him. I, that, that is... Uh, Maybe, maybe the show is messing with us, thinking that we would pick up the eyelash thing and they're just messing with us at this point. Maybe. Um, we don't know everything that was whispered. We're going to go back through this in the episode. We don't know everything that was whispered because Zhao, like every bumbling police officer in every anime and series, takes out the earpiece before listening to the whole damn thing. I'm like, Zhao, what are we doing? And so we don't see, we just know that what... Tianxi says to to uh, Wang is the idea that your timing is perfect. Like you've timed it right as Chan's coming. Now the question is, why did Chang lead them away? Why did Chang take off? What else was said? Were they being threatened? Was, was, they said that Tianxi didn't have any weapons or anything. Were they threatening with something else? I, I was wondering for a hot second if, if there was a way to possess somebody by getting close and, and telling them something. But I, if that was activating something, but I don't know. And then did the incident, did Tian Chen, did it change his personality or did it kill? I wondered if Tian Chen died at the beginning of this when they got hit with the hammer. Cause I'm like, that's a serious wound. I'm like, did they end up dying? And it seemed towards the end when Chang was kicked out of the photo that like they were maybe about to pass out. Now they could obviously live through that. Sure. But did their personality change? Or not. I I don't know because Tian Shen seems to have always had this. Whoever talked to them in the past. Now, the big question, we might as well start this episode. The big question is who talked to Tian Shen at the beginning of this? Because he's saying my mom was always beaten by him. But the next day they pretend as if nothing happened. And we see the two of them sitting there. How about, he says, how about you? He says, what were you doing? And he says, he asked me. He always asked me to bring my little sister into the bedroom. Uh-huh. He always said to bring my little sister. I'm assuming he's talking about the dad. Of course we don't see the full face of the kid that Tian Chen is friends with, right? So Tian Chen and the friend. And the friend. Now... My theory has been that Chang is the, the Chang has been the friend all along that Tian Shen has been looking for. Fr Ch Chang has been that friend that they've been looking for this entire time. Now the question is, is it still Tian Chen looking? Or did Tian Chi find out and is looking for her brother? Does, does Tian Chi believe that Chang influenced Tian Chen which caused him to act. I was thinking that if Tian Chen had died in this flashback in this past event that that would be reason for Tian Chi to go after Chang would be like you caused my brother to die because you influenced him in the past. Now the question is if this is Chang was it Chang as a kid or did they possess someone and talk to Chan Chin in the back in the past? Because we can't see their eyes, do we think that it was Chang in the past as a kid talking to Tian Chin? Or do we think that maybe this is something that happens in the future that Tian Chin finds a photo of that Chang finds a photo of Tian Chin as a kid, goes back and talks to him and starts this whole cycle that ends up happening. Like everything is just gets time looped at all. At all. It's a big thing of causality, right? Is that something that happens? Because the thing about it is Chang doesn't seem to remember Tian Chin. And from this conversation, it seems like, like this would be a, 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 more, a, a conversation you'd remember a conversation where a kid talks to you about his family's abuse and the situation, especially with Chang being someone who's as family oriented as he is, you would think that Chang would remember having this conversation with Tian Chin if it had happened. But if this conversation hasn't happened yet in the current timeline with Chang, and at some point Chang is going to go back in the past through a picture of Tian Chin and have this conversation with him, then it would make sense why he doesn't remember so far. The other option is that it's Chan. And that it's Chan having the conversation that Chan has possessed a kid 
and is having the conversation with Tian Chen to influence him later. And later, Chan is going to confront Tian Chen and reveal that he is the friend. I, and that's what gets Tan Chen to work with him. He's like, oh, you were the one talking to me all those years ago. Oh, okay, I'll definitely work with you because you were the person that inspired me to stand up to my dad. The question is, somebody had said that the voice in the Discord of the kid was really deep, and I was like, yeah, it is. They're not really hiding that they're a kid. So that's the question of, is it Chan or is it Chang? I can't really tell. It didn't sound like Chang. And the whole conversation about beasts and evolution, that seems more like a Chan conversation than a Chang conversation. It doesn't seem like something Chang would think up. It seems more like something Chan would say, but we need to get back into this discussion. So he says, into the bedroom and then hide. He says, don't be embarrassed. You did the right thing. Your mother would also want you to do this. It's her rule to survive until now. He says, we're like animals living in a jungle. Some are born to be eaten by others. And he says, I hate people like him the most. So yeah, and then there's the conversation about evolution, though. About how, you know, some of them are afraid of being eaten. They choose to hide and dodge their entire life. There are some subtitle mm, errors in this episode. Like they misspelled words, which was interesting. And then the dad comes back. Again, this is really hard to watch. And he says, but some people, some people, though, keep evolving and growing as he raises the hammer up. He said, and that's when the soccer ball says some are born as bloodthirsty beasts and some are special and evolving and growing. So, yeah, it's basically the idea that some people are just born as monsters and they don't ever change. They're just always going to be like that. And that the dad is a good case of that. And then the friend says that other people evolve and keep changing over time. Which, I guess, maybe it's Chang. Maybe Chang is referring to himself, that Lou's had that conversation with him, how Chang keeps growing as a person. Maybe it is Chang having the conversation. It just didn't read as something Chang would say. But, again, we as it's being said, we go back and look directly at Chang as Zhangji, as um, Tianxi, um, when it says they keep growing and evolving. So maybe it is Chang speaking to Tian Chen. Maybe. But we see that Chang was about to do something. Yeah. And of course, yeah, the, the imagery is right as the kid goes to save the soccer ball for Tian Chen, who's struggling to get it out of the fountain, we see Chang about to take action, and that's when Tian Chen steps in to take the place instead. So I... I don't know. I think it is Chang that's the friend somehow. But my theory is now that, that he goes back and has this conversation rather than he had this conversation in the past. So I don't think this is the case. I think the symbolism is pointing that it's Chong, that it's Chong but I think that it's him later on is going to go back and have the conversation in the past based on this incident, based on what happens. Because, yeah, one of the few hunters... In this jungle, they become one of the hunters. Yeah, uh, that changes things. And that's when Tian Chen gets hit with the hammer. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Tian Chen, of Tian Chen becoming a hunter that can change things. Which is essentially what Chang is, right? That's what he's suggesting. Some people become that. So, yeah, uh, which do you want to be in the future? Do you want to be a bloodthirsty beast or a hunter? That is the question. Do you want to be the beast or the hunter? And that kind of ties to the whole red eyes thing. I'm, yeah, that's insane. Okay. But now the question is, was this a conversation initiated from the future into the past or did it happen in the past? Again, I think it's the former uh, so yeah, so the episode itself is called uh, Li Tianxi, but they pronounce Tianxi with a one, like X1, which you could kind of be like a double meaning of it's twin one, thing one, thing two. Mm, I don't know if we're supposed to read into that. Is there like multiple Tianxis? 
I, the, some people have posed that there's like multiple Changs everywhere. I'm like, I don't have time in my brain. <laughs> I don't have space in my brain for that theory. No multiverse. I don't need parallel universes yet. Just, just stick with this. Let's not make it more complicated than it is. I really don't think it's as complicated as some people are making it out to be in the theories. I think that it can be fairly simple. It's just, we don't have all the clues to put the pieces together to know what's happening. But I say fairly simple, but it's link click. <laughs> So yeah, so somehow in all of this, Tian Chen manages to get manages to get uh, Tian Shi back to the bedroom, right, to survive. It's really hard to watch. It's really hard to watch the wife get beaten by the man again. I'm like, show we had a whole episode of that last week. We didn't need it again. And the fact that the dad is so delusional, like he is so insane from jealousy that he wonders who took the photo of the two of them. And I'm like, dude, she just, you just saw the Polaroid. You know how it works. Like I was so pissed that he would just kept, he was so delusional at that point that he just couldn't accept that they were just having a photo without him. I'm like, the brother could have taken it, right? Like he just, it's like, do you not see like what the problem is? And he said, how can I believe you? And, I, and Lou, so Lou says, what should I do now? There was a little bit of a timeline discrepancy in here because at the time it seemed like Lou was shouting as the dad was attacking them the first time and Lou was shouting for Chang not to step in and alter the timeline, right? That's what it seemed like. But now looking back, we know that Lou is actually referring to whatever was happening with the mom. And maybe Lou was like, wait, how'd you get into the mom's perspective? Maybe that's why he was screaming, like, what are you doing? How is this happening? Because he ends up coming back immediately later. So Chang, switching perspectives. Can he do that? Can he do that in photo? That's interesting. So does Chang have the ability and doesn't realize it to change perspectives from the person taking the photograph to the person that's also in the photo with them. Is that something they can do? If it is, that's pretty insane. And the question is, if that is a power that he possesses, does Lou know about it? Did Lou know about it and didn't want Chang to know? Because that's kind of OP. If you can enter a photograph with Lou's ability connecting with yours, if you can enter a photograph and Lou guides you through the events in the photograph and you had the ability to switch from person to person, that is a terrifying ability because then you can alter things very easily. You could alter the past quite easily. And I could see where Lou would be like, we don't want to do that because that will cause a lot of problems. And it could be that it's limited to only only possessing those in the photo. So that doesn't mean that you can go around and possess everybody in the past once you enter the past. It just means that the picture was of Tian Chi and the mom. And so Chang can only possess Tian Chi and the mom. That's the only two people he can possess. But still, the idea that if you enter a photo with multiple people and thus you can possess those multiple people, that could cause a huge ripple effect and a huge problem that Lou's probably like, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not, let's not. So I'm wondering if Lou only told him being like, you can only possess the person going, you're going in the photograph with D don't, you can't do anything else. <laughs> and then in that moment where, where Chang was panicking and freaking out on the mom's behalf, did he accidentally activate something and without him even knowing it transition to the mom's perspective? And Lou's like, oh shit, I don't, uh, we're getting into dangerous waters. We don't want to admit that that's something we could have been doing all along. Don't want to do that. So he's just like, get out of there. We don't know, right? We don't know. But the point is that the photo is brought up that Chang and them have, he's like, we, what does he do? He says, he goes back to that thing. He's like, pick up the photo. Because he says, what do we, what should I do now? He's like, now things are getting out of hand. And he's like, I don't know if I really realized this was going to go this way. He's like, what should I do now? And Lou's like, it's to save her, right? Because Chang's like, Chang's like, I, here's the thing that's so scary is that 
at this moment, Chang has the opportunity to save the mom. But he doesn't because they can't, right? You can't change the past. So he's like, if the photo is gone, then the future, our present, will no longer exist. So there is this, you've, you've set up this thing that you can't have a butterfly effect. He's like, if you save the photo, then the present slash technically future is safe, but the mom dies. But if you save the mom, the future is completely different. And the crazy thing is, at this point, we don't know how much has Lu and Cheng screwed up this entire timeline. Because if Cheng goes back in the past, if this is Cheng going back in the past to have the conversation with Chan Chin, that influences his actions in this timeline, which influences the mom. And if Cheng accidentally possessed the mom and killed the dad, that changed the timeline. So they could have altered reality and not realized it. Or maybe they do realize it. And then there's a the situation of why Tian Chi would be mad at Chang if she was like, you entered the photograph. You had the opportunity to save my mom and you didn't do it. And they're like, but we can't change the past. And Tian Chi is like, but you went into the past. And I'm like, but you gave us the photo. So I, it, it would make sense if Tian Chi gave them the photo to go back in the past save her brother from getting hit in the head and possibly ending up with Chan, however that ended up happening. And then they didn't do it. And so Tian Chi's like, why didn't you change the past? I gave you the perfect opportunity. And maybe Lu and Chang have to have a conversation with her saying, we can't change the past. That There's a butterfly effect. We can't do that. It'll destroy the fabric of time and space. And then I could see the, the Tian Chi being like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want my mom back. And it being like, it's complicated. But that's, that's given the idea that, that this is the same, that it's not Tian Chen. I just, I, when Lu apologizes to Chang, I felt that because Chang is just sitting there crying, holding the photo. Like Chang is devastated. Like I, I feel so bad for Chang because all he wanted was to just have this family dinner and have this semblance of a family that he himself doesn't have. And it became the worst possible thing in the world. And Chang just sitting there crying as her is absolutely heartbreaking. And Lou being like, I'm sorry. He's like, I, if, if I could have foreseen everything, I wouldn't have let you experience this pain. And I believe Lou. I believe that Lou didn't quite see maybe how bad this was going to get. And now he's like, shit, I should not have done this. This was a bad idea. I shouldn't let you enter the photo. This is bad. I'm so sorry. Like, like you can just see kind of Lou just looking like mm, I'm sorry this was really bad N not not what I intended and then Chang just getting so worked up and it, it's really hard to watch but then the brother leads him away with the arm the brother leads him away and so then they talk about the bedtime story and the bedtime story is interesting it's about like you think at first it's going to be about this happy family and it is like the two of them having this happy family with the mom and the dad and everything's great. And then they talk about them getting lost one day and running into two crows and the sister being scared. And they met two crows who could speak, which at first I thought the crows were referring to Chang and uh, Lu and Chang, the two crows that could speak, talking to both of them. And then they say the crows laughed at them. And so the brother kills the one crow and then they ask if they can go back home. That feels like a big symbolic story of the crows representing uh, Lu and Chang. And then the one crow being die dying being the brother, who if the brother is the red eyes, the brother um, stabbing Lu to kill him for laughing at them. And then asking Chang if they can go home, being like, can we go back to this past before things went crazy? And it seems like a symbolic maybe representation of Lu and Chang being the crows and then trying to kill Lu and then being the brother killing the one crow and then asking Chang if they can go back doing what they're doing now with Chang in the present timeline. That's what it seems like it could be representing because the mom doesn't ever answer the question. And, and the mom not answering the question 
of them being running, did they find their way home? The mom doesn't answer the question, and it almost seems like a representation of no matter what happens, you can't go back to the past. You can't go back to the way things once were. Part of growing up is accepting that you can't ever go back to that childhood or that past you had before. You just have to keep going forward. I don't know if that's exactly what it represents, but it, it seems to be something similar. So, in any case, the wife... But then we go back that as the story is being told, we suddenly cut to the mom. We don't see the mom's face to know if she's been possessed by Chang. We don't see that. We just see her kicking. And then when we see... Now, okay, we do see her eyes for a brief second. We go back to that. We see the mom kicking. And we see her eyes, but they're still dark. Okay? So they're still dark like Chang wasn't possessing her yet. Okay. So she just kicked him to get him away from her. Because for a second I was like, was that a martial arts move? But no, she hasn't been possessed. Unless it's an animation error, her eyes aren't yellow. So then we see the neighbor finally doing something and calling the cops. I am glad that he actually called the cops, though. Thank goodness. He actually called to get them to go over. Yeah. And then there's a big fight going on. But now, the thing about it is, when we go back to see the mom... He's like screaming and that's when Lou's like, wait, Chang. And we don't see the mom's face, right? We just see them walking towards him and Lou calling out screaming for Chang. And we see the hammer. And then we see it all goes black and him yelling. And then, and then Lou yells for Chang but we don't see the woman's face, so did Chang possess her? And that's when he yells. And then Lou's like, what are you doing? And then we see the hammer come down, and Chang comes back. Okay. And he's like, what did you just do? Why did you lose contact? Okay, so it could be if, if Chang possessed the mom... In that moment, Lou lost contact. Which, last episode when they were in and out of contact, I'm like, this has happened before where the, the, the frequency is not as strong as we think it is. And Shank says, I couldn't see or hear anything. And then, he says, I came back. And like, did you not voluntarily exit the phone? He's like, I don't remember putting my palms together. But before coming out, I could see some vague scenes. But it was like I was in the body of the mom. And then we see everything shattering. Like like the, the transmission and stuff is not right. And there's red on the screen. Why is there red? What What is happening? And we see like, like everything is fractured and fragmented. He's like, it's too strange. It's the first time I've had such an experience. I don't understand. And then, like, Zhao is immediately wanting details, and Ling's like, hey, I know you really want this and you're anxious about it, but he just, like, inhabited the body of a little girl watching this horribly abusive situation. Can we, like, let them have a moment? And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry. And he's like, we should just summarize the clues instead. I also like that Lou's phone has a little cat charm that's just, like, his pajamas. <laughs> it's really a cute little detail. So, yeah, like, what, what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Lou and her husband died at home the same day. So the person who reported was the neighbor, right? So we go back. According to the informant, Lou had heated argument with her husband. So we see like he died from the hammer in the head. So, so did Chang possess the mom and kill the dad? Is that what happened? It seems like that's what happened. The question is, is the ability to switch people that you possess something that Lou knew about and could possibly happen? Or is it something that even Lou doesn't know about that Chang has discovered? Or in the process, because if it's Chang giving the speech to Qian Chen about becoming a hunter and evolving, is this evolution of, is it an evolution of Chang's powers where Chang feels helpless and hopeless as the daughter and then switches to the mom? Is this evolution of Chang's power something that Lou has no clue about? That he didn't even know was a thing that could happen. I, mm, I, that could be. Lou may not even understand what's going on. That would be interesting. And during the fight, 
um, Lulon hit Lee Fawn on the head with the hammer causing his death. But, so there was a stab wound to the abdomen and it looks like it was nearby there. But it doesn't say whether the dad stabbed her or not. It was judged that their son, Tian Chin, so they're, they're twins. Yeah, their birth date's the same. They're both, um, they're both Gemini's. They're either both, it's either the 6th of November or it's the 11th of June. They're either Gemini's or they're mm, Libras? One of the two. If they were Libras, it would make sense. But if they were Gemini, it would make sense. Okay, and the twin sister were also present. Okay. I experienced the day of the case on that photo. But she was being abused all the time and never fought back. Well, she didn't fight back because you possessed her and killed him. I, now, my, my thing is, I wonder if either he stabbed her right as she hit him with the hammer or they didn't talk about the dad, the dad's fingerprints being on the stab wound. So it could have been possible. How did the mom die? The mom's death. We need to bring that up. So we know that either Chang possessing the mom and her killing the dad is what happened or she killed him of her own volition. But the fact that she's never fought back before leads us to believe that Chang possessed the mom to fight back. So my thing is, did she see what happened with the husband and felt so awful that she stabbed herself? But that doesn't seem right because she still had her two kids. Why would she stab herself? Or did he stab her like, did he like grab a kitchen thing out of the cabinet drawer or something and stab her right as she was hitting with the hammer? Or it's either one of three things. Either the dad stabbed her, she stabbed herself after the fact, or somebody else stabbed her. One of those three things happened. She didn't just fall on a knife. So, um, but we don't know what the case is. And then of course... She like maybe she had the impulse to resist after she exited the photo. And then what happened to the children after that? Here's where things get sketchy. They're like, it's likely one of them gave Lu Guang the photo, which is exactly the case. Their files have been erased. Of course they have. They disappeared after the crime. There's an informant who claims to know everything. They disappeared after the crime. They ran off together. Now, the question is, did Chan show up and take them both in? <laughs> Did Sean take them both in? Because here's the thing. The person who investigated the case was Sean. Sean was the investigator. He showed up, I bet, on the crime scene. He showed up at the crime scene. And it was while he was still a cop. So. It was before he left as a, to become a lawyer. So yeah, so yes, so it is a very strong possibility that Sean investigated this case, found the two kids, took them in, and very much like we talked in the last episode about Ghetto from Jujutsu Kaisen, and I'm not going to go into details because if you've not seen Jujutsu Kaisen, go watch it, you'll find out what we're talking about, but it does seem like, I'm like, is this a ghetto situation? Did he take them two kids in? Okay. And then decided to go rogue and become a lawyer? Okay. All right, sure. <laughs> Okay, why not? Um, but yeah, it could be very well that Sean took the two kids in, had the police information erased on the kids, kept the stuff there about the parents, and that's all we know. And then meanwhile has maybe been tailoring these kids over the last several years to become little murder children and commit this crime and then trace it all back to the, Lu to the Luell family. It could very well be that Sean is using the kids because they're related to the Luell Min family who he's trying to get revenge on. And it just all connects together in a nice little neat bow. I don't know for sure if that's the case or not, but it would make sense if it was all tied together. And then I like that Chang immediately is like, yep, I'm going to go to the police station, going to question her, going to do this. And Lou's like, please be careful. <laughs> I think Lou at this point knows that regardless of what he's holding, withholding from Chang, he's not going to convince Chang not to go. So he might as well let him. Lou, I think Lou's realizing like, unless I tell Chang everything, I just need to go with the flow, work with Chang on this, and we'll see what happens. I think that that's where he's at at this point. 
And Shang's like, we're in a police station. What could happen? I was like, don't say that. When will you all learn not to say stupid stuff like that? And so the one thing that is interesting is at first I was nervous when Ling went with them because I was like, you guys are leaving Lou all alone. Lou wanted to be alone. Lou wanted to be alone so he could get out of there. I am wholly convinced that Lou wanted to be alone so he could get out of there. He knew something was going to go down and he's like, I need to get out of here so that I can help them. Now what that ends up being, that is the big question. But I think Lou knew exactly what was going to go what was going to go down. Because as soon as they leave, he looks at the phone and he like grips it harder. Like he knows what's going to happen. Something's happening here. So they, they put the wiretap in. Of course, surveillance has been asked to be left. And then we talk about the device and everything. I do love Wang's fashion. Her fashion sense is great. And so where do they put the wiretap at? They put it um, underneath the hood, right? Yes. And so that's when he goes in with her. Now, now, Chi is immediately like, let's, you know, talk about the game. They go to shake hands and then they twitch their hand being like, hand over everything hidden from you on you. And Chang is like, what? Like, this is very unsuspecting. How could it be her? How, Wang, how much information do we have about her? And they said, I brought everything I could find. And he pulls his hand back and they're just staring at him. And he's like, here's my phone. Now, does his phone have like a little cat ring just like, does his phone have a cat ring that matches Lou's? It has the dog. Oh my God. Lou's phone has the cat ring from the shorts and Chang's has the dog keychain from the shorts. <laughs> Come on, y'all. What is this nonsense? He says, my phone, I've got nothing else. And that's when Tianchi says, uh, remember the game that we've been playing? What does the game tell us? What is this? He's like, mm. I, I like that Chang is just like, I don't like this girl feeling me up. <laughs> I don't like the girl feeling me up and checking for things. I like he has that little tiny blush like, oh, this is uncomfortable. Hmm. And then just staring up at him. And but knowing from the heartbeat and everything knows, I think that they know that something's there. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, forget about it. Yep. The foundation of cooperation is mutual trust. I hope we can have a better start this time. Now, the question is, they're, they're fairly short. Is this Tianxi or not? That is the question. Is it, in fact, Tan, Tianxi or is it the brother? Right? That is the big question about what this is. And so he hands the phone back to the... I'm glad that they don't have the phone to take pictures of them. Glad that's the case. And so then... Now, wait a minute. I want to go back to that guard. The guard that has that's getting the phone from them has a bandage on their forehead or a bandage or a scar on their forehead but no that couldn't be their their hair's dyed brown it made me think they look kind of like the dad their hair's dyed brown and they have brown eyes but there's no way no because it's the Tianxin has pink hair and red eyes this show's making me question everything every little moment right I do love the set piece of them talking to each other they're talking about cooperation. Why do you know? What do you know? And they're like, the foundation of the game is mutual trust, fairness, and equality. Did you forget this so soon? So yeah, revealing that they are possibly the red eyes. Now, is Tianchi the red eyes that stabbed Lu? Or are they just repeating what they've been told to talk about from the brother or Chan? That is a very good game. Or do they all know that the rules of the game is based on fairness and quality and them all knowing the same thing. And so Chang realizes like, I don't want to lie because if I lie, it's like, why did you turn out like this? And they're like, well, how would you know I turned out like this? You haven't even asked me about my background. So I like that Chang does like give up the ghost and talk about the photo, meaning that they're, they're talking about the same thing because he thinks that Lou, he's like, I can't mention anything about the photo, but if I don't at least reveal that I know about the photo, if I don't at least tell a little bit of a truth and I tell a total lie, then Lou and the others might be in jeopardy. So he admits that he admits that the red eyes is pretty perceptive and smart. So they're like, no, let's just be, let's just be real about this. And they're like, oh, great. It shows we're getting more and more in sync. Now the idea of becoming in sync, 
I'm like, is the red eyes going to try to use Chang's power and do the whole clap thing themselves? Are they trying to take, are they going to try to take Chang away from Lu and use him for their own means? I don't know that whole in sync line. I'm like, mm, what are we doing? And they're like, I want to drink a Coke to celebrate this moment. And Chang's like, what? Why Cokes? And why three? So they drink three sodas, right? Which is, again, do, is doing the three colas. Why do they need all this sugar, right? I'm like, do they need extra sugar to get moving? I'm like, how can a girl burp more rudely than men? I'm like, okay. Is it, is it Tian Chin, though? When he said that line because of the burp and everything. So do they need sugar and energy in order for their ability to work? Or did they know they're going to need sugar and energy to run? I, why they drink three sodas? Or are they just, is it just part of their quirky personality? I don't know. And so then they have this moment though, where they talk about like, why do you wear the mask? And they're like, I'm not sick. I've never been sick, but I've been hypersensitive. So I didn't like, I wanted to kind of stay segregated from everything. Being around people makes it feel like there's ants crawling over my body. Which, the the affliction that the sister has at Tian Chi, if this is them, it would make sense that they're so sensitive to everything and they chose to kind of withdraw into themselves. Like, that all makes sense. That all seems appropriate. And it makes me think that this is actually Tian, Tian Chi. We don't know. So the mask whole part, I mean, the mask part makes sense from a covering up their face point of view in this, but it also makes sense of it being the brother. And then it says, my mother never gave up on me. It's interesting they don't talk about the brother. They don't even mention the brother here. They just talk about the mom. I don't know why the brother, the brother was in the picture with them. So why don't they mention the brother at all? Maybe, and then again, if this is Tian Shen talking for her, maybe the brother doesn't even realize what a big impact he had on her. And so he just thinks that she only thought of the mom and not himself. Is that the case? I don't know. It says, with her help, I, can't, I began approaching and getting used to this world. But on that night, then the dad is brought up. And Chang, who is there, empathizes. Of course, Chang is a huge empath. And so he empathizes with, with the sister and then says, from then on, I only feel safe when I cover myself up tightly. And so you can tell Chang like wants to reach out says, I hate being a freak in the eyes of others. Which again, all of that makes sense. But again, that is, you could definitely see that being, if the brother is portraying her, you could see that being the brother interpreting interpreting everything the sister has said or has been thinking. So is this really Tian Chi and her thoughts or is this the brother's interpretation? Again, the fact the brother is left out makes me think that it's the brother's interpretation because the brother doesn't seem to think he's a big influence on her life, but he is. So that's what makes me think that it could still be Tian Chin. He's just trying to interpret his sister's feelings. And then... Chang goes to touch her and then she grabs his hand and says, and promise me one more thing. And so we don't know what the promise is. Like, what is the promise? Is the promise to protect the brother? We don't know what happens. Like, what, what is the situation? Why did they leave? Why did they go to the bathroom? What's going on? What did she make him promise? That's the big question. Like, what is this? He's like, oh, she drank too much Coke and needs to go to the restroom, which is a valid excuse. He's like, I'll take her there. And he's like, well, this situation is a bit special. She requests that I go with her. And he's like, okay. And he's like, fine. It's a walk from there. Turn left the first passion, go along the end. And that's when Wang shows up saying, we don't know about the ability or how to use it. We need more people to watch over her. So I'll go lead the way. So the question is, do we know if Zhao and Ling have been listening to Chang too? Do we know what was said, what she said to promise? Like what, what is the situation? Like what did they, what did she say? And that's when Lou looks at the phone and sees that it's, okay, it's 1850. 
So it's five minutes past between the start of this scene and the end of it. So the fact that both Lou and Sean are looking at their phones is, or their watches or phones, mean they're both planning something at the same time. And he says, can you answer me the question first? And she says, you sit. What did she, what'd she say there? What did she say back there? She said something. I have a question. Anna, can you answer me first? And she says, sure. These two siblings are quite strange. How could there only be one small section of the case related information in the record? Like, what's the deal? Where's the rest? And she's like, can I take a look? Can I go out and take a look too? And he's like, is it okay for Wang to have gone alone? Well, no. She's known for being a tough woman. And there are a few male colleagues who can compete with her. And it's like, well, what's going on? She wants to whisper something to her. Is that okay? And he's like, I'm listening too. I can't hear what she's saying. And then that's when he finds out that the person in charge of the case was Chon. Uh-huh. And then the phone starts going off. So what's the deal? Why does the phone go off? And she's saying something, but then she's like, what did you say? I can't hear you. And then what, what is happening? Why? And then they're at the bathroom. Why is Chang not doing anything? What is the deal? And says, I'm asking. And then why the phone, yeah, the headphones came off, damn it. Something's wrong over there. And then he puts it back in. Based on the time, it's near the year. It's exactly the year that he left the police force. And then that's when he looks at his phone. And the twin says, oh, Damn it! No, I'm trying to like figure out any clue. And then Lou says, He turns the phone off. So, and then we see Lou in the shadow in the darkness there. Okay. So, that whole thing with the phone and Lou's shadow and everything. I, Lou decided to leave, but why? Why did he sigh? What is the deal? What is going on? Why did you come at such a perfect time when I asked to go to the restroom? So yeah, so have you been listening the whole time? So yeah, so she found out that they've been using a listening device. But what's the situation? Is there anything on the cameras that we should be able to see? Why? And then Zhao's like, I misjudged. I didn't expect her to be so smart. So we're, I'm trying to look and see if there's anybody we can see on the screens, but there's nothing there. What is her relationship with Chan Jin? I don't see anything on the cameras. Oh, damn it. Meanwhile, Chan Jin is in his car, like just sitting there happy as a lark, yawning, waiting for something to happen. Is he outside the hospital or is that outside the police station? And so what did his watch say? What time did his watch say? It said it was like five minutes till or it was getting closer. Did Jin Sean set the whole thing up? Probably. What does he want to do? We don't know. And so then we still don't see anything on the cameras. Okay. And Ling's like, I'm going to go check the restroom. And he's like, I'm going with you. But we don't see anything on the cameras. Wait. And then he goes back to get his phone. And why does his phone go off? Who's on the phone with him? And then he starts laughing. Sean starts laughing. He's like, what did you say? Where, why is Lou missing? So then there's the big thing with the window. And they're like, I'm sorry. We broke in and found the window broken. So we thought Mr. Lou had an accident. Okay. So, but here's the thing. The glass broke from the outside. There's no glass on the inside of the room. So the glass broke from the outside. So he broke out and left. But why? And where? And what is happening? And then it's mid, and yeah, and then it's nine o'clock, right? Time's up. Okay, now he did a thing with his hands. He did this. So when Sean did this with his hands, was there a meaning to that? What, what happened? What is going on? What? No. And then he gets out of the car with the other guys. So were they going in? I won't lose so easily this time. So then there's all these like thugs and this one guy that has like, that looks like he's terrifying. And then Ling goes to the bathroom, they're gone. Where are they at? And he's like, there's no one in the women's restroom. 
They've escaped the police station by now. And then on the surveillance, he looks over and sees them walking out. But now the question is, she looks like she has, like she's holding on to both of them and they're leading her out of there. What's the deal? Why are they leading her away? Does she have something against them? What? Why? That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. What happened? I'm confused now too. Yes. And then we see Wang is gone and Chang is running away with her. So what is the deal? Why is Chang running? What's going on? He doesn't look like he's possessed by anything. So what's happening? So the question is, are they are they running from Chan? It was Chan going in to the police station to get them, to apprehend them? Was he going in the hospital to try to get Lou? Why are they running away from Chan and them? Is are they running what What about the brother? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I'm I this felt like again a setup episode for next week and we're going to find out maybe answers next week maybe I don't know What I do know is I'm really curious to hear your thoughts down below This series has me like spiraling and I don't know what to make of it but I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below I hope you all have a wonderful week Please stay safe take care and yeah I'll, I'll I'll be back next week to see what happens with this madness on season two of Link Click. Bye.